Welcome to the Knowledge Society channel, where today we embark on an exploration of the profound sense of helplessness prevalent in our postmodern era, drawing inspiration from Byung Chun Han's highlighted work, The Burnout Society. We unravel the intricacies of the contemporary societal malaise, examining five key facets. The Performance Society gives us a false sense of freedom and makes us masters and slaves of ourselves. The loss of faith no longer occurs only in relation to God and the beyond, but to the world itself and also in humanity. Impermanence and transience has never been so striking in human life. Nothing seems to last. The isolation of the postmodern self, the unbridled search for self-realization, and the individualism generate loneliness and more loneliness. The fear of death, for lack of a satisfactory philosophical narrative, led to the deification of health. In other words, health emerges as a new goddess, and this leads to a generation of neurotics and hypochondriacs. Before we start analyzing each point, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is André Frossard Signis. I have a bachelor's degree in political science and owner of this different and beautiful name. It sounds like a rich name, I'm not, but I'd wish. I am passionate about philosophy, history, sociology, psychoanalysis, sexuality, history of religion, in short, by this myriad of subjects that, when interconnected, enable our growth. The text we will work today, it's based on this book. This book here, guys. The Burnout Society, from Bin Chun Han. He is a South Korean writer, a contemporary hour. He is alive and has impacted and influenced thinkers around the world. In really, we reflect very little about our life, why we live, how we live, how we arrive to the point we are living today. Move on to what matters. Let's analyze the first proposition extracted from the book. The Performance Society gives us a false sense of freedom and makes us masters and slaves of ourselves. In the context of our performance-driven society, we find ourselves both masters and slaves, entangled in the web of the meritocracy and the relentless pursuit of success. This intricate dance is particularly evident in the pervasive influence of social networks, where we are compelled to constantly showcase our happiness and achievements. The author posits that this performance society has turned us into both the rulers and the subjugated, making us our own executioners. It's a paradoxical state of being, akin to self-sabotage and constant self-vigilance. This paradox extended to the concept of freedom, a key point emphasized by Byung Chun Han. The prevailing capitalist narrative sells the idea of absolute freedom, the freedom to undertake, conquer, work and amass wealth. However, this purported freedom, according to the author, is illusory. Instead of fostering genuine freedom, generates an internal demand for constant self-improvement and success. This false sense of freedom becomes a significant factor contributing to feelings of helplessness and despondency in the postmodern self. In this narrative, the pressure to be the best, to outshine colleagues, and to climb the ladder of success becomes a relentless pursuit. The illusion of freedom transforms into a burden, leading to a sense of personal failure if one cannot achieve the expected heights. Byung Chun Han challenges this narrative, urging individuals to embrace a more contemplative perspective on life and freedom. The message is clear. In the pursuit of freedom, we must avoid being enslaved by unrealistic expectations and fight solace in the inherent humanity 
that transcends depression to constantly excel. The loss of faith no longer occurs only in relation to God and the beyond, but to the world itself and also in humanity. The erosion of faith is no longer confined to the realm of divine. It now extends the very fabric of our world and humanity itself. In a landscape where increasing number of individuals are embracing atheism and distancing themselves from religion's beliefs, the crux lies not in the waning faith in God or an afterlife, but rather in the diminishing trust in the world and humanity. Historically, we reflect on the Belle Epoque, a period of profound human development that unfolded 150 years ago. Those era witnessed remarkable strides in microbiology, medicine and technology, fostering a pervasive sense of hope. Envisioning a future where people own flying cars and use robots to perform menial tasks. However, the optimism of the Belle Epoque has transformed into a prevailing sentiment of helplessness and a loss of faith in the inherent goodness of humanity. Despite possession the technological prowess to launch manned rockets to the moon and achieve breakthroughs in medical science capable of curing and alleviating various ailments, the harsh reality of 2023 paints a stark contrast. People still succumb to hunger, diarrhea and trivial issues underscoring the persistent specter of social inequality and a deficiency in basic humanity. The disjunction between the envisioned progress in the past and the harsh disparities of the present accentuates a profound loss of faith in the trajectory of human development and compassion. Impermanence and transience has never been so striking in human life. Nothing seems to last. In this third item that I separated, the author underscores the profound impact of impermanence and transience on human life, highlighting the fleeting nature of a world where nothing seems endure. This observation, if comprehended, could serve as a transformative key to alleviate the pervasive feeling of helplessness. The discussion then delves into the brain's struggle to cope with the modern demand for multitasking and heightened performance. Contrary to the belief in multitasking, the brain swiftly shifts focus between tasks rather than handling them simultaneously. The relentless pace takes a toll, leading to mental and physical exhaustion by the end of the day, week and month. This theme of transience extends to relationships, with marriages lasting 20 to 30 years considered rare. The fleeting nature of partnerships, coupled with the diminished credibility of religious institutions, contributes to a pervasive sense of helplessness. The author emphasizes the lack of reliable support structures, giving context to the term helplessness. In the chaotic contemporary world, the abundance of social connections doesn't necessarily translate to meaningful support. Despite having numerous contacts, the feeling of helplessness persists as individuals realize a lack of genuine connections to lean on. The isolation of the postmodern self, the unbridled search for self-realization, and the individualism generate loneliness and more loneliness. Isolation has become increasingly palpable in our contemporary reality. The challenge of forming genuine connections and friendships has intensified, reflecting the prevailing difficulty in cultivating meaningful companionships. Would you not concur with this observation? The world seems saturated with individuals absorbed in self-centered pursuits fostering an environment where true friendships are overshadowed by envy and a self-centered mindset. This heightened emphasis on self-fulfillment has given rise to a pervasive sense of loneliness and self-imposed isolation. Notably, the World Health Organization has recognized loneliness as a global health threat, affecting one in four elderly individuals and 15% of teenagers. 
When one's focus narrows solely to personal interests, distancing oneself from collective concerns, or engaging with others solely for personal gain, the consequence is an underlying realization of this self-imposed detachment. A glaring manifestation of this distortion in human priorities lies in the realm of politics. The term politics originates from the Greek word politeia, or politeia, denoting the public sphere, the polis, the shared space for public affairs. However, the contemporary landscape reveals a stark deviation from this original intent, as individuals wield politics as a tool for personal gain rather than a vehicle for collective well-being. This inversion of the true essence of politics, wherein it becomes a means for private benefit rather than a platform for public welfare, reflects a disconcerting norm within our society. The perversion of politics into a self-serving instrument contributes to the broader sense of societal malaise and discord. In my view, this practice of overvaluing the self to the detriment of the social, which would be that feeling of belonging to a collective, is one of the factors that trigger the feeling of helplessness in the postmodern self. The fear of death, for lack of a satisfactory philosophical narrative, led to the deification of health. In other words, health emerges as a new goddess, and this leads to a generation of neurotics and hypochondriacs. Talking about death is always a delicate subject. However, let's analyze the Nobel writer's view on the topic. Regardless of religious or spiritual beliefs, nearly everyone harbors a degree of fear towards death. For those without faith, this fear can be even more daunting. Contrary to this anxiety, French philosopher André Comte Sponville offers insights in his book presenting non-religious perspectives that can bring joy amid the seemingly desperate outlook. Another author, Luke Ferry, explores alternative philosophical notions, contributing to the quest for hope in the absence of traditional beliefs. Regarding this book by Professor Andres Ponville, we already have videos published on the channel. I will leave you the link in the description. In the realm of existential philosophy, Byung Chul Han delves into the consequences of lacking a philosophical perspective on death. In contemporary society, this absence has led to the deification of health. Nietzsche's concept, after the death of God, health is erected a new goddess, is aptly observed by Han in today's generation marked by hypochondria. The societal neurosis surrounding health, evident in various behaviors from aesthetic procedures to a plethora of medicines, is a direct result of this void in perspectives on mortality. By addressing these points, Han's work serves as a profound exploration of our collective feelings of distress and helplessness. If you found this discussion insightful, I invite you to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Your engagement helps deliver more content like this to viewers seeking profound insights. Thank you for joining our exploration into the depths of contemporary philosophical challenges. So, to recap, what are the five points that would take, according to South Korean Byu Shun Han, to the feeling of helplessness? Let's quote them again now. The performance society gives us a false sense of freedom and makes us masters and slaves of ourselves. The loss of faith no longer occurs only in relation to God and the beyond, but to the world itself and also in humanity. Impermanence and transience has never been so striking in human life. Nothing seems to last. The isolation of the postmodern self, the unbridled search for self-realization, and the individualism generate loneliness and more loneliness. The fear of death, for lack of a satisfactory philosophical narrative, led to the deification of health, in other words, health emerges as a new goddess, and this leads to a generation of neurotics and hypochondriacs. We finished the video and I'm going to leave a bonus here for you, which I always like to leave a little treat at the end. Cicero, the Roman philosopher and thinker who lived before the birth of Jesus, he said, we should praise the contemporary life, not the active life. So you see, all the topics we talk about here are elements of this toxic positivity 
that reigns in the world, a characteristic of the performance in society. This unbridled search for income, for performance, generates collective madness. Only the contemplative life makes man what he should be, thought Cicero. For those who want to buy, I'll leave the link to these books in the description. And that's it, folks. If you like, subscribe to the channel, leave a thumbs up, sign here to the channel with notification bell, and we'll see you in the next video here at the Technology Society. Bye-bye.